Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Launch in the News. Let's get into it. Let's dive right in by talking about Bloom AI. This is really exciting. So this is an open source AI platform that has been trained and it's had a thousand largely academic volunteers involved, over 7 million worth of compute time to go into this language model that is going to ideally rival Google and OpenAI, but be open source. And you can see that one of the main tenets behind this platform is that it will ideally fight against some of the serious practical and ethical flaws that some of the corporate based and private AI platforms may have. And these are pretty challenging to actually physically address, unfortunately, but the idea is that this is going to be an open source trained AI, which is so exciting. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is that it's it has 176 billion parameters, which is on par with GPT-3. And GPT-3, as most folks know in the AI space, is a very well-trained platform. And it's done a lot of really interesting things since it was released. Um, one of the interesting things this particular article points out is that essentially a lot of the models are sometimes impressive, but they have no sense of meaning of the language, which causes them to create gibberish from time to time. And what's challenging is the models generally do cost millions of dollars to train and they have a big carbon footprint. So these are some of the fundamental key aspects of AI that folks in the AI field are going to have to address to make it more optimal long term, of course. Now, this is interesting because part of the fundamental text that they're using for this language based AI is literally a set of 500 different sources that these different academic folks have chosen. Whereas in many cases, a lot of these platforms are just turned loose on the Internet. And I'm sure there's a lot more sophistication than just that but that can create some of the bias. So there was a lot of intentionality to at least iterate on some of the past challenges that have become evident in the AI training that occurred for some of the other AI platforms and try to tweak that and at least make a progression on that training set that was used. Now, because the code and the data set itself behind the model are open, researchers can iterate on this and try to understand the roots of harmful behaviors which could improve future iterations. And that in and of itself is extremely exciting to be able to get into the model and into the data sets. What a powerful combination this will be to be able to iterate faster and faster for AI. Now, what's really cool about this Bloom platform is that it is literally going to be available for download. This article goes on to talk about how it is going to be a pretty substantial logistical challenge to actually host this and work with it. So there will also be offers to provide access to the Bloom platform to experiment with from some of the different partners who help build this Bloom platform. It also comes with documentation that outlines its capabilities and its limitations. And it is essentially going to require that everyone sign a legal license that commits researchers to not use the model for malicious or inappropriate ends which is pretty cool too. So really interesting stuff going on in the open source AI world, including data sets and trained AI that are becoming open source. Okay, let's take a look at the next article now. Okay, in this article, we're taking a look at how automated medical imaging tools can shorten the time to diagnosis while enabling physicians to triage medical cases more effectively, and especially in time sensitive situations. Now, this article goes on to talk about a specific company that is doing this, but there are some really nice takeaways that the CEO in this interview is able to deliver. One of the main things he says here in this interview is how the solutions have been playing crucial roles in positively impacting patient income outcomes. And that's a pretty generic statement, but it goes on to talk about how the biggest challenge in that physicians deal with in their regular day-to-day -day is not being aware of the exact way AI can help them in delivering better patient care. And this is pretty interesting because educating radiology teams, for example, and resources to use AI optimally in their daily workflow can bring a massive change. It can bring, bring a massive improvement 
for things that are imaging related. This particular company has done a lot of work with going through data sets and you can kind of read about what they've done in this article. Uh, but they say essentially that they're having to deal with all kinds of pragmatic challenges with transferring the data out of a particular local environment of a hospital group, sending it to the cloud and dealing with HIPAA and de-identifying that data, making sure that it's secure at every point, et cetera. But they've really done that. And they've, according to this article in the interview, uh, they really have done that and set it up so that it's possible to effectively bring more value whenever they're diagnosing patients. And so the key takeaway here is that you have a real life example of a company that is affecting outcomes, but one of the biggest challenges from affecting these outcomes using AI for medical imaging essentially is being able to train the staff on how to use it to augment the staff and provide them with resources to onboard and experiment with this really supplement or augmentation of their capabilities. And that's how it's being presented. So from a business perspective, if you're in the AI field, this is a very powerful way to present yourself is as an augmentation of what's already working and as a way to reduce mundane, trivial tasks on the day to day to help make those more accurate by automating them. OK, let's take a look at the next article now. OK, so this article is talking about the similar space with the healthcare space and in particular about the Food and Drug Administration. And I suppose this could apply to not just healthcare, but, but also to other use cases that have to do with standards for regulating AI and machine learning. And basically this discussion is with Brad Thompson, a regulatory attorney at Epstein, Becker and Green. And he goes on to say that I think the FDA should encourage standards organizations and industry bodies to really try and develop best practices that the FDA can then incorporate by reference into their guidance documents and into their regulatory oversight. So he's saying that instead of making a formal standard, it's essentially references and guidance documents that he's recommending. He's saying that my concern with the current approach is standards groups are notorious for how long they take to develop standards. So currently, a lot of what happens is you get these committees and the committees get information from industry experts that are part of the support group for those committee members. But the committees themselves take a long time to adjudicate and kind of decide what these standards are going to be for different industries, including the FDA. And there's a lot of formal formality, really bureaucratic kind of process that can occur. And it's too slow to keep up with the industry and some of the changes that are needed. They can easily spend years, therefore, debating things before they get to a consensus decision. And so Thompson said that the agency does have policy staff, the FDA agency, with sophisticated understanding of AI and machine learning algorithms to issue good policy, but the lack of bandwidth is really in the review areas. So again, this is emphasizing the fact that a lot of these committees and groups, they tend to go, unfortunately, quite slow, and that bottlenecks the process. So. The FDA has also argued it needs the authority to allow additional data collection and monitoring in the post-market setting. But Thompson said that he believes that would be overly intrusive. And really the big takeaway from this article is that with a space like AI and machine learning that's moving so quickly, one of the big recommendations is that you, if you're you know, watching this from a business perspective or from an implementation perspective, or you're using this directly within an organization, you're probably going to want to look for a lot of guidance in where the industry is going, similar to what this uh, news is talking about all the time. Basically, keep your ear to the ground and understand where this industry is going, because a lot of folks are going to be driving toward guidance and industry standards, as opposed to waiting for some of these standards to come out of these legislative bodies and government organizations like the FDA. Okay, let's take a look at the last article now. Okay, so we recently reported on the Google Lambda and how it was, according to one of the engineers at Google, it appeared to be sentient from his perspective. This is a different AI platform, and this one is called Imogen. And the researchers from Google's brain team have announced Imogen, a text 
to image AI model that can generate photorealistic images of a scene given a textual description. So Imogen outperforms Dolly 2 on the Coco benchmark and unlike many similar models is pre-trained only on text data. So that's a key distinction from this model. And you can read essentially what their statement is, some of the researchers uh, who discussed the potential societal impact of their work. They noted that their aim is to advance research on generative methods using text to image synthesis as a test bed. So while end user applications of generative methods remain largely out of scope, we recognize the potential downstream applications of this research are varied. In future work, we will explore, explore a framework for responsible externalization that balances the value of external auditing with the risks of unrestricted open access. So what in the world did they just say? Basically what they're saying is, if you can do text to image synthesis, you could eventually do things like 3D printing from AI. And then that could also be a com combining physical outputs as well. So you could have, I mean, really the mind is open to any kind of creative scenarios that an AI could control, right? So this could be robotics and it could be driving someone somewhere, that kind of a thing. But I think to start with, the main idea here is that the externalization is getting it into the physical world. It could be interaction with folks in an intelligent way, or I think to start with using it for marketing or something like that, um, that's immediately practical. But the idea here is that they really want to emphasize this concept of external auditing as well. I won't bore you with reading the details on this. For those who want to, from a technical perspective, this is a really interesting highlight that talks about the specifics of how they're actually doing this. And it doesn't, of course, get into all of the details, but you can see a nice highlight here of what their essentially conceptual architecture is that they're using to run this AI. And then one of the things that I thought would be pretty interesting is to actually take a look at this Imogen site. And if you get a chance just to wrap things up here, I recommend taking a look at the imogen.research.google site just for fun. It's pretty interesting because they're showing examples in real time here where they are giving inputs and then getting outputs from Imogen. And you can see a slew of examples down here that are essentially accumulating as they go through these sample sets. But um, <laughs> some of the images are pretty cool that they're making based on text inputs. So with that, I would certainly welcome if you have any feedback on topics that you would like to hear more about with these news updates. And we will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Thanks for watching this edition of Tech Launch in the News. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe so you can see more in the news resources. We also have complimentary masterclasses and other resources available to you on our website, www.gotechlaunch.com. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them in the comments section. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.